You might want to turn on the uh, microphone. It would move it closer to your mouth or something. We're hardly hearing it. Are you hearing me now? I hear you hit it, tap it on there, but. Just talk loud. All right, let, let, let's, see, let's see if I can project and actually get a good working out. How's that? So, what I want to talk to you all about a little bit today is the certification and corruption. Certification are always an interesting topic because you have to wonder why do we do this? It was a classic, a classic thing from Treasurer Sierra Madre and the Blazing Saddle. Certification? We don't need no thinking certification. Well, this is what I say. Is that if you sit and look at what an employer is doing, you go out and try to get out into the job and out into the job market, they'd like to have some sort of assurance that you have those skill sets that you're reclaiming when you come in when you come into the job market. And and the folks you see up here today were taken from job ads that are current in places like Monster.com and Dive for positions here in the Huntsville area where employers are looking for social security people today. And almost every ad you will see is going to list one or more of these certifications that they're going to expect you as an applicant to have when they come in. And it's interesting to think about when you suddenly look at it, folks, you're out of that soon. It's worse than a can of candy. And you sit down and look at how this stuff operates and how this stuff works. You begin to ask yourself, okay, what have I got to do? What are the things I've got to do coming in, trying to get into this industry to get to the point where I can get one of these certifications? So let's talk a little bit about what the certifications are. And you sit down and look across the entire spectrum of what we do in, let me use the the term here, the cybersecurity industry. There's going to be a list of many different jobs and many different job types across the entire security field. Between information assurance, information security, security engineering. All of them have a certain set of skills that you're going to expect to have. All of them will have things that are going to be specific to each one of these jobs. And the thing that makes it interesting for what we see here in, the, here in North Alabama is that so much of the work that occurs in this area revolves around defense contracting. And the Department of Defense has this requirement anybody that works with classified digital information, that they have one or more of these different certifications. And they really require you to get one of these and then keep learning about them as time goes on. And what you'll find is that there are a lot of these different certifications that you go out and get. This list is about, about a year, year and a half old. It's gotten larger. So which one of the ones are for someone who's just now coming out onto the job market? Which one should you think about getting and how do you go about getting them? First one we want to take a look at here is the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification. It's done by the organization called the DC Council, one of our sponsors for this conference today. And what the Certified Ethical Hacker is trying to find out from you is how good are you in terms of being a hacker? It's testing what you know and how well do you know to apply those things in a way that is safe, efficient, and working. So if you sit down and you look at what they are actually wanting you to do, say they'll have a training course they'll expect you to go through before it comes in. Or have you had two years worth of experience? 
So in this, for this particular certification, what you'll find is that it has the advantage that's the good entry level certification. It's the first thing that you can get, you can very quickly get into once you start looking to try to find work in the student. The idea is here, when you go in to take the, try to get the certification, like all of us, you got to take a test. This test is 125 questions. It's, it's a 90 minute long test. And you have a passing score of around 70%. You got to make a seat. And like all these other things, they have a cost to As one of our earlier presenters said, these are things that you want to get your employer to pay for if you can make them do it. The other thing to remember about all these certifications is they're not permanent. Is that once about every three years, you're going to have to go back through in some way or another to recertify with whomever the organization was that handles doing these certifications. The second one here is the CompTIA Security Plus certification. Now, this certification is more oriented towards taking and looking at what is system security, network infrastructure, how that works. And the prerequisites here are going to be that you have taken and completed the CompTIA Network Plus certification. So there is a sequence of these certifications that this particular vendor is going to expect you to achieve to get to the point where you get to be able to do the security plus. So this is one where you're going to be working over a period of a number of years to get through up to the point where you can do this certification. The other requirement here is that they'd like you to have two years worth of experience in the field. Uh, the examination in this case is very similar to what you would go through with the uh, CEH. It's 100 questions, 90 minute time limit, and a uh, passing score again around the C. You get a, a 75 out of, out of a score between 100 and 90. And what you find is that it's again a three year recertification process. The next one of these what I call the graduate school equations. This is the CISSP. This is the golden ticket for when it comes to certifications in our field. And this is the one where it's expected for you to be a expert in a number of different parts and pieces of what they call a domain of knowledge, a body of knowledge. And what that is, it's just a big long list of skill sets that you're expected to have and know coming out. This also has a much more extensive work level of experience. It's about a five year period of ex that they expect you to have had some experience out working in the field and working in this field. This is a technical test. It's a 250, 250 question test. You have roughly six hours to finish the test. I mean, how many of you guys have taken the at, at this point, I've tried uh, I've taken the SAT or the ACT. The similar, the way these tests are administered are very similar to the experience you go through this. Much the same places that you have to go through and procedures that you have to go through in order to take these tests. This is an expensive, also an expensive certification. And yeah, I want to get your employer to as you sit down and you look at it from a pre-certification standpoint, what we're going to ask you to do is every three years, you either go through a bunch of additional courses that prove that you have kept up that certification, or three tests. And they understand that there's a lot of people out there in the field, you know, a lot of people out working in the industry, who may not have gotten to the point where they have the five years worth of a work experience or expected. What they have is a couple of other certifications that you look at. Either the your SSCP or CISSC alternate that will allow you to come in and prove that you have the knowledge by taking the test, but 
You may not have that five years worth of work experience. Yeah. CISSG is kind of contentious in, 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 in our industry. A lot of people will look at it and go, basically look at it and go, yeah. And you like my head, you like my head, and I'm going to put my hair ball on the carpet. But it's the thing that most employers are now looking at as the baseline that they expect their employees to get to after a couple of years in the working out in the time. The other certifications that are important are the vendor specific. Interesting ones that are most places to offer are the EOC or the networking certifications from Cisco. The things like the CCNP and the CCNA certifications. One of those specific tests is a security oriented test. And here they are again, just like Tom Pia, are expecting you to have come through and completed some of these prerequisite certifications before you do the interview. On the other side is the Microsoft certification. They made a change a couple of years ago. It used to that you would have a certification where someone would come in and you could get a Microsoft certified solution expert security services. What they have changed on their side is they, they have spread that out across all their other certifications. So if you work and you get it, you can work and become an NCSE, every one of the various pieces and parts in that certification now have a security component. There are plenty of others out there from a vendor side. Red Hat has one for those of you who are interested in home Linux. Most of the major switch and network hardware vendors have them as well. People like there are the networks, that point, and so on. So the question becomes, <coughs> you're looking at that out in the alphabet suit and saying, how do I actually get to the point where I can achieve some of this? Again, I will reiterate the point from an earlier presentation. Let your employer drive that. If it's to the point where you're trying to get that first job in the industry, this is where those of us who are working in education come in to help you. But the first thing to do is talk to the folks here today who are from the EC Council about getting that certified ethical hacker certification. When, when I do student advising, that's the first thing I tell people that they need to do to get moving out into this field. And then what you do is you start working on the CompTIA vendor neutral certifications. Things like the A plus, network plus, and security plus certifications. <coughs> and get those while you're going to school. By the time you get to that point where you're ready to start going out and looking to get into the field after school, you'll be in a position to start thinking about getting the Cisco certifications and then moving towards getting CISSP. Now, how do I get to this point? Like I said before, this is where we as educators come in to help. All three of the sponsoring institutions for this conference have here in this region programs in information assurance and information security that are already oriented towards helping prepare you to get these certifications. On top of that as well is that the thing about getting a college degree is not as much learning the skill sets as it is learning how to think. <clears throat> I spend as much time when I'm teaching programming looking at people and saying, guys, think about the problem rather than thinking about the code. And that's the entire point here about going through those two to five years worth of agony that you're going through when you go, when you go to college. It's learning how to go through and do this. These programs out here are set so that you can get these certifications through your courses here or at, at UAH or out at our institution out at Ashton State. And if you have interest in doing that, just talk to one of us who are going around today. So just a quick overview of what the certifications are, how that thing is, what I will do at this point. I'll open the floor up for questions. Um, 
most of the certification vendors, what they will do is they will charge pretty much, charge by smaller fee. So they won't hit you with the, won't hit you with another $700. Well, it's like for the ISSP, it's about $250, I think. I have to go to the hotel now. But very good question, thank you. Okay, well, since, oh, one more question. Yes, sir. I'm working right now to try to get CISSP. I don't know. The knowledge that you build up to get that certification is because what the certification does are moving for is working to moving at testing to understand what it is you understand. If you learn, it's not as much of a matter of going through and memorizing everything that's there as it is learning those skills and getting those. That's the benefit that comes from the circuit. Again, thank you for your questions. Well, I think at this point, it's time for me to hand the, hand the arena off. We'll, I'll take one more. I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't hear that. We have, uh, we do not do that directly to work with folks who are coming. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope that was not a good conversation. So our uh, next speaker is Dave Cronister out of uh, St. Louis. He is a uh, founder of Parameter Security. He's an international speaker. Uh, we travel the world together. We, we've done conferences in Iceland and all over the country. Uh, and Huntsville for today. Uh, actually, no, that's the second time in Huntsville. Uh, Dave is a regular on uh, national news talking uh, recently about the uh, target attacks. Great little experience in uh, pen testing and for instance, things in handling. I know he's going to give us a really interesting talk today. If you don't, we're not breaking back to home again. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing? Alright. Sorry, you, you, I didn't know your talk was starting this quick. I didn't know the other one was <laughs> happening at all. I'm married for 12 years, I'm afraid to have a stringer on my neck. <laughs> 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 uh, 